Thanks, a good question. Um, I think the best integrated organization on the face of this earth is the U.S. military. I, I firmly believe that, particularly the United States Army, all the service, I guess I'm biased in that. They use good too, okay. But here, here's the thing, is that when Colin Powell, back 20 years ago, he carried Chair Chairman Joint Chiefs of Staff, the civilian newspapers thought, wow, big deal. In the military, we, we thought, why do they make it a big deal? This is, this is just normal, we, we don't, and here's, here's the thing, is in the military, there is no sense of, oh, how do we reach out to grab in an in in almost um, a ver a ver affirmative action type way or quote way. It's just you pick the best person. And in that case, a lot of African Americans have done well, and there's no animosity. Where animosity comes in is we try to grab one person sometimes in a way it's almost patronizing. We don't need to do that. And I, I love Tim Scott. In fact, frankly, I mean, running against his lieutenant governor, but he's, he's one of many out there. And here's, here's the thing about my part of the state, is again, running as the uh, chairman for Jim, Jim Pratt's campaign. Uh, dirty secret is the Republican Party just kind of said, you know, uh, Jim, you really shouldn't run, because, you know, Jim Clyburn, we'll just leave him alone, okay? That's the de facto reality of what goes on. And that needs to stop. My part of the state, you know, that I live in right now is important. And I've been writing editorials the last eight, nine years. And in fact, that's one of the ways you can kind of look at me as a conservative, look at my editorials. They're mostly socially conservative, officially too, but a lot of socially conservative editorials. I don't know how many pastors out there in our community, uh, black pastors, have said, wow, keep it up. And these are hard, hard hitting, social, socially uh, conservative editorials. It really stuck with me, is that, you know, Charles Butler, same thing, Bill, keep writing those articles. And I'm slamming Democrats, but it's about the social issues. And I think it's one of the ways is, a concern I've got sometimes with, with different groups that are, that are, is that we give up the social issues. We do not need to give up the social issues. We, we, are, we are one big package. We are both social and fiscal. And I believe, actually, just as Steve mentioned, the social issues won't really bring in the, uh, the African American community. Y'all don't get sick of me saying this, uh, but I believe we reach minorities the same way we reach women or youth or anybody else. We have to have a consistent conservative message. People get confused when they don't understand what you stand for. When you stand on principle, then they say, hey, I can relate to that. I want to be a part of that. You know, the short answer, I've been saying this everywhere too, is Tim Scott. Tim Scott didn't apologize for his conservatism. You know, all the statistics I've seen, though, and read over the years, been doing this talk for years too. Minorities and other segments of society are just as attracted to the conservative values that you and I hold dear. They believe in them whether it's pro-life issues or traditional marriage issues, even keeping your own money. I find that minorities across the board agree with us. What we have to do, though, is be consistent. Just like folks like me and you get confused by a message that's here and there and yonder, the rhinos voting one way and the platform saying another. We have to have a consistent conservative message from the party that says, here's what we stand for, here's what the platform says, here's why we believe in it. And then I believe minorities, I believe youth, and I believe all these other disaffected voters say, hey, that's something we can grab hold of. That's something we can believe in. We want to be a part of that. Everybody wants to be a part of a winning team. The confusion comes in if the team is running in two different directions. We've had way too much of that over the last few years, where Republicans voted like Democrats. And people scratched their head and went, what do you guys really stand for? I'm not sure if there's anything there to latch on to. The consistent conservative message, standing by the platform and the principles that we hold dear, will attract minorities and any other segment of a society because Americans believe in the principles and the ideals that are contained in our Republican Party platform. Mr. Connor, in recent months, there have been a few elected Republicans who have not supported the Republican platform and ideals once elected. Let's delve a little bit more into this. What can or would you do as South Carolina GOP chair to alleviate this situation? Sure. Uh, you know, the, the first thing is, and I'm glad I hasn't mentioned, is the, um, is the message to begin with, is that we, we make very, very clear who and what we are uh, as Republicans, and it needs, needs to stay the same. Um, now, I'm glad that the, police, the first course of action most, most times is to go and talk to people, um, sit down with them, find out where they stand and what the issues are before taking further action. But in this case, and there's also the House the Republican Caucus uh, that can work with as well to again talk to candidates. But I'm one of the believes that if someone is, has got a label 
and they continue to act in a way that is not consistent with our core set of beliefs, that I will reach out to recruit someone to run against them in a primary. And I realize this is a contentious issue, but it's one that I firmly believe in and I'm not going to back down on. Um, and actually, I'll just go ahead and keep, keep the answer short on that. But uh, it is one that I think that happens a few times. Um, there will be a turnaround when they understand that when Bill Connor is elected chairman, I didn't back down to Taliban bullets. And I'm not going to back down if people have been in office for way too long, <laughs> not standing by uh, Republican principles. Thank you very much. We've got to encourage competitive primaries, down ticket everywhere. If people are misbehaving, somebody's got to be willing to pick up the phone and give them a call. You know, the last five months since I've been running for chairman, I've been all over the state. I've been building relationships with Tea Party folks, Republican activists, with legislators, and everybody. Because I think having that relationship with them is imperative. I also believe there's another part of this that maybe we've been missing. We've seen folks rising out of nowhere to get involved. People who've never been involved in the politics and in the political world at all have been showing up at precinct reorganization, have been coming to meetings, they're called Tea Party, they're called 912ers, whatever their groups are. That's creating a pressure on these legislators that I believe is going to make them behave a whole lot more. The other aspect about this, the second part is, I think we've been too willing to accept party switchers in the last, I don't know, however many years. Since the Republican majority took hold, it seems like some folks in the state house wanted to keep their, you know, seniority. And so they were willing to switch parties. And I think it's only been recently that our state party chairman and maybe some other folks within the party have said, wait a minute, well, if you're not going to adhere to the Republican Party platform and the principles we believe in, we don't want you switching parties. So I think the Tea Party is an aspect of it. I also believe, like I've been saying all night, and like I've said for years now, is a consistent conservative message that doesn't confuse people. That way, when people see somebody misbehaving and voting so against what we believe in, they vote them out of office and put a real conservative in there for South Carolina's leadership. You talk about uh, members of the party not standing with the party, and I've already spoken to the issue about recruiting candidates at all levels and to make sure we have conservative candidates running, even in situations where you have an incumbent Republican, so I've already made that point clear. But I'd go back to it and tell you this. The first thing you want to do as the party leader is be in touch with these folks on the telephone, go sit down with them in their office, make sure that you've had a clear line of communication. Most of the time, they're not not failing to follow the party uh, line simply because they didn't know about it. Usually it's because they have some very specific agenda. Sometimes maybe that's excusable, sometimes it's not. There are a lot of issues that come up in the legislature. I would not necessarily say that I would encourage someone to run against a person just because they got it wrong on one particular issue. It depends. You have to be open-minded in that regard. But I will tell you, when you have a consistent pattern of people acting inappropriately, with people uh, not following the party platform, making a, a, a situation to where they embarrass themselves and embarrass the party, it's important that you run conservative candidates against them in a situation like that. When you talk about party switchers, there was a time for that. When David Wilkins was working to become the first Republican speaker in South Carolina since the Civil War, people needed a few more party switchers. We were glad to have them at that time. But times are different now. We do need to have people who stand with us on our issues. And it's important. Just like if things changed in regard to encouraging party switchers back then, things changed in regard to the primary system. There was a time not so long ago when the open primary worked very well and worked to our advantage to allow the Republican Party to grow. But again, the times have changed. And as a result, now we need to change that primary system. And I will tell you specifically, that goes. I go back to that, that is the single most important thing we can do to have party cohesion and party loyalty. Because if it's changed, so that only Republicans who have registered are voting in that primary. The folks who are not sticking with our party platform are not likely to win renomination. That's why I think it's so critically important that we push this issue, and that's why it's the number one issue I'm talking about as I travel to say. Over to Mr. Connolly. I know you've all touched on this a bit, but what role should the Tea Party have in the GOP, if any, and do you plan to reach out to them? Absolutely. Um, you know, I love this. I've been a Tea Party way before anybody ever heard of Tea Party. I've been speaking on American Christian history and free markets for over 20 years. I wrote a book called Freedom Tide in, 19, in 2002. I've been able to travel the entire world speaking about free markets. I love what my friend Jeff Betts back there said about me on the one of the blogs or Facebook or something. He said, 
Read Chad's book. You'll see he's been a tea partier way before the tea party came about. You know, I've spent time in that book. I've spent time traveling the country and the world and certainly South Carolina talking about the principles the Tea Party believes in. I believe that's why you've seen them embrace me. I believe that's why you've seen them promote the speaking and they've come on board my campaign. It's because they understand that I want to be a part of this. Listen, in 2012 and 14 and 16, we need everybody involved. If we're going to beat Barack Obama, if we're going to win a majority in the U.S. Senate, if we're going to build and forge a permanent conservative majority in South Carolina, we've got to pull everybody in. We've got to unify the party and pull in folks. The Tea Party will be involved. I've been encouraging those folks to get involved in the precinct process, and I believe we're going to have them a seat at the table in the Republican Party so that it can be an advisory role and I also know what's going on so they can maybe create pressure on some of the legislators that are more difficult for us to create pressure on just because they're wearing our uniform. Like I said, I've been involved in this movement way before the Tea Party came around, and that's why it's easy for me to involve them in the process of the Republican Party. If I'm elected chairman, the Tea Party will have more than a seat at the table because I think they'll be sitting in the chairman's seat. Bottom line is, I have, as Chad just indicated, been out there promoting these issues for long before there was anybody knew anything about the Tea Party other than the one that they had up in Boston, Massachusetts back in 1773. And I make the point because I've been consistent with the message for years. On my website, we've got some of the archived documents. If you go back there, um, check out my website at www.roundforchair.com. You can even look in, at the brochure that I prepared back in 1998 when I was running a race for the U.S. Senate. I lost that Republican primary that year, and then Ernest Hollings was reelected. But that brochure is very clear. It talks directly about the fact that we need to eliminate the federal income tax system. It talked about our need to support the right to life. It talked about all these critical issues that we strongly support, supported then and support now. And it was very clear, and I even said it, someone accused me of being a prophet because I pointed out very clearly that if we were timid, if we didn't take bold action then, that we would lose the majorities in the U.S. Congress that we had been granted. And that's exactly what happened to us in 2006. And so these Tea Parties that have grown up, many of them are made up of people who used to consider themselves Republican, but now who doubt our, doubt our word. And why would they doubt our word? This is what gets me. The Democrats, they will look me in the eye and they say, you don't pay enough taxes, your government's not big enough, we want to increase the government and make you pay more in taxes. These are the things that we're going to do. And so I, I disagree with them, at least they're clear and they tell me that. When a Republican tells me they're going to cut my taxes, not raise the taxes, and they're going to reduce the size and the scope of the federal government, and I believe them, and then they get in office and they do exactly the other thing, of course I have no respect for them. And that's what's happened to us again and again, and that's why the Republican brand has been tarnished. That's why I want to stand up, make it clear what we stand for, welcome the Tea Party, 